Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored a bit more of the Blue Kingdom. Um, I think the last episode was the one where we were declared anti-deceased. Instead of... What were we before that? The Invisible or something like that? Basically no status. Now we have some sort of status, not a very good one, but it's something. Also checked out the creepy spider people at Wellmouth. Um, it's been almost a week since I've played. Also, I'm sick right now, so my voice is probably going to be a bit... <clears throat> a bit funky and, you know, some sniffles and stuff like that. So I've kind of forgotten what I was doing. I remember I wanted to get a bunch of gems and bring them back to the court. Because the judge likes gems, um, and that would also allow me to convince them without trying to pass a heart skill check, which I'm terrible at. It would allow me to convince them to help me out with the industrialists' uh, lost love, or, well, not lost, I mean, their dead love, to see if I can find them and, like, guess, smuggle them out of the Blue Kingdom. But uh, for now, I'm back at Sky Barnet. I think I just arrived here at the end of the last episode, so... Aside from getting gems, let's see what else I can do. I guess take... Did I want to take on crew? 17's a lot. I guess? Let's do it. I think it'll be interesting to have some Shades of the Dead on board. Which is what will happen if I do this option. The gathered faces look up at you. Some wind-bitten and hopeful, others hidden behind their porcelain death masks. A line of new crewmates files past you. Once aboard, they quickly separate into their respective groups. The living with the living, the dead with the dead. The silent dead work tirelessly and with fascinated concentration. The living struggle to keep up. It's eerie, passing porcelain-masked crew in the corridors, having them join you at dinner in the galley delicately tipping their masks an inch forward so the food can reach their mouths. So they too, they eat even though they're dead. Do they eat our food or are they all eating the petrichor, the sugary food of the dead? How many did I get? I had 17, so I just gained four? 18, 19, 20, 21? Yeah. How many of them were dead? I don't know. Marketplace of litigators. Um, yeah, I still have the cowled loquacitor. So let's just stay with them. They're fine. They've helped me out before. Anything to do with the embassy? Mm, port reports. We've already seen this before. I've got one more gratitude to the embassy of Albion. Uh, ah, now. Actually, I only needed one gratitude to do this. What does this do? Exchanges gratitude for a volume of notes on the Blue Kingdom, which can be used to hire certain assistants. Oh. Um, yeah, actually, that's really interesting. Let's do that. It's not what I expected to do here, he admits. At first, I staged performances for the locals, gave poetry readings. Couldn't tell if they appreciated it at all. Have you ever given a reading to a circle of horse spirits? And even when you've got ex-humans listening, they'd put their jars of voices in the front row and you couldn't say which voice went with whom. Now, these notes fed a very receptive audience back home. He takes out a volume and autographs the front page with a flourish. Thanks for the autograph, you're a real celebrity. Uh, yeah, what the heck, let's get another one. Now I've got two. Oh, I didn't actually mean to pay a visit to the ambassador. Whoops. Oh, wait. Unlock those with one volume of notes on the Blue Kingdom. Ask the ambassador about the accuracy of the volume. Is the cultural attaché's work officially approved? The books are for Albion. Without constant reports about progress, Albion won't send any support for their embassy or any salary for the staff. And when they do pay, they're stingy. So the attaché may publish what he likes, 
especially if the publishers continue to pay in sovereigns and supplies. Besides, this volume infuses just enough truth to interest readers back home, while omitting what might trouble them. I tried once to write home a report about the Court of Wales, she remarks. They accused me of being honey-mazed, but it was all true. When there's a new verdict in that court, they sing it in the water. I think that answers one of my questions. There's been mentions of lots of different types of courts, like the, uh... Mm, what court did we go to? Was it the Court of Apes or something like that? And I was wondering, with all the different horse spirits and human spirits and all sorts of different types of spirits, do they have a court for every distinct group of entities? It looks like they do. They have a court of whales. So does this mean I can get another litigator to help me? Now that I have those notes? No, it's not for a litigator. Okay, I'm not quite sure what those notes are for then, but... I'm sure they'll come in handy. Mm, oh yeah, I can't repair without gratitude, right? Have to requisition it. Need gratitude. Eh, I'm almost full anyway. Yeah, alright, let's get some gems and stuff and be on our way. Yeah, that's all good. Alright, let's go. Uh, once again, I'm not going to cut out my travel back there, even though we've already been there twice now through here. But we've seen new stuff each time. This whole place is small and strange and a bit scary. So let's see it again. You know what? Actually, let me try to take a different way there. That could be more interesting, too. So I want to get to the stone face court. Maybe I can get there by going counter... Uh, no, actually clockwise along the edge here. Let's see if there's a way through. Hello. get a single point of damage. Share knowledge you've stolen from plundered libraries. Exchange scraps of ancient knowledge for searing enigma. I have seven and I need seven. Hmm. I don't know if I need a searing enigma, but that sounds pretty damn good. Let's do that. Whisper something of what you've gleamed. Uh, gleaned from these stolen texts to the dying Scrivener. Perhaps it will respond. A wooden claw hangs before you, waiting. The Scrivener tolerates you climbing up its arm to perch by its hood. Its hooded head swivels frantically, as though it can sense the texts you hold. You must remove your helmet to talk to it. Your breath is frost white. You cannot remain here long. You tell it all you can understand of your stolen scraps. The Scrivener does not respond. As you're about to make your way back, it begins to whisper. It tells you the names of other servants born at the Forge of Souls. The Scrivener's life ends before it can finish. Nine Searing Enigmas. That's a lot. Haven't really been many opportunities to spend them. Oh, right, there's a platform there. 
Well, if I can hook around to the right up here, then I'll go check it out. Ah, another enclave of the dead. Enjoy their hospitality with my crew. Reduces my terror, which I kind of desperately need. Those a while awake to porcelain masks watching over you. Yeah, same description as before. We now have two dining with the dead. I mean, it looks like we can just go straight up here. So let's check out that port. Or sta station? What is it called? Platform. House of Days. The house is lit from nowhere in the color of dawn. It has no windows anywhere in its great facade, only colonnades and stone. It gives the impression of having been extended again and again, portions of the building at different heights with different roofs. Yeah, I thought it looked odd if you look over here. It's like a bunch of things stacked on each other. Kind of just randomly like, sort of looking. Doesn't look like there's any particular order. No shop, just the House of Days, the porch, or the antechamber. Let's go to the porch. The House of Days is a palace so large that it's hard to see both ends of the facade. The staircase up is many stories tall and ballrooms wide. There's only one door. Spirits go in briskly, but those who come out are slower, not always sure where to go next. A masked rubbery spirit sits on the steps, holding an application tablet smeared in yellowish fluid. Application denied, no right of appeal. What were they denied? I can't mingle because... Oh, two weeks have to have passed. Hmm. Well, before I attempt the doorway, let's try to get an idea of what this place even is. Let's lurk near the entrance. Perhaps someone will tell you what lies inside. Once upon a time, the House of Days was only one court with the Pansecretus? Pansecretus. Yeah, let's go with that pronunciation. This sounds pretty good. Uh, with the Pansecretus inside, they built new courts each time a new need was found. Now, several floors of the House of Days are too low ceilinged for a human to enter and others are scaled for giants. Two sections of the house are underwater, and one burns without respite, catering to the spirits of those born in volcanoes. These surface differences do not signify. Every court is essentially alike, a place to wait, a place to fill forms, a collection of weighing and measuring devices, a window with a secretary. That's why it looks so... Slapdash thrown together, because it is. Added a new one every time they needed something. Okay, let's attempt it. Ah, yeah, I need a status in the Blue Kingdom to be able to do this, so I could not have done this before I was declared anti-deceased. You have the status to enter, but you have not been to the House of Days before, and there are rituals to perform. Acknowledged. You must be clean in purpose and in body, and to this end, you are washed with vinegar and scrubbed with salt. Ooh, ouch. Then you are given three poems in honor of the sapphire king, which you must read aloud in chorus with the others entering the house just now. Not as bad as my litigator made me think, remarks a cheerful shade beside you, but that is before the ceremony of inhalation. You are tested with the odor of the rotting dead, and only just escape being most improperly ill. After all this, the attendants direct you towards the Court of Apes. Yeah, it was the Court of Apes. Okay, that's right. There's one of these will be the Court of Apes for me and my people. Ceremony of inhalation. Odor of the rotting dead. Ugh. 
This is where you belong. A man in military trousers reads a newspaper. A masked gorilla holds a sheaf of documents written on banana leaf. On the wall is a sign that says, everything in its place. When you read it a second time, it says, the queue forms to the right. This is where you belong. Oh, the House of Days, this is where I need to negotiate the embassy's lease. The rental dispute thing, right. Ah, and they have their own testament here, just like I got the testament of the the uh, rose or something. At the stone court, I believe. It's another testament. I should probably get it. I'm sure it'll come in handy. A matter of convincing the attendants of this court that your case deserves to be heard by another. And he uses veils. 99% chance of success. Hell yes. Oh, it even takes a cryptic benefactor. Damn. You tell a story that moves the attendant to tears. You invoke the influence of your benefactor. You embellish certain points and gloss over others. It's enough. I have a friend in another court. You will only need to bring a message from me, says the attendant, proud of his generosity. All the trouble of your case will land on someone else. The attendant inscribes the testament of the feather in clay and bakes it with the glare of his will. When you pick it up, it feels like a brick that has been left in the sun. <clears throat> mm, let's lurk near the court. You may wish to observe its protocols. This court attends to apes and monkeys, to humans, and to certain orders that appear similar to humans. It issues testaments of the feather when the attendants think another court should listen to someone's rightful claim. And they say that lightless souls can be cured here, though at a significant price. As you watch, a yoked shade carries in a, carries in a basket of figs. I wonder how I get lightless. Hmm. If I had to, this would remove it at the permanent cost of one mirrors. Damn. Well, let's just launch into the rental dispute. Take a number, wait on a cushion until the number is called. Your number 2047. <laughs> you sit. You lose feeling in your legs. Sometimes you see another ape rise from its place. It shakes hands with the ape to its left and the ape to its right. Grave courtesy from gorilla to chimp, from chimp to woman, from woman to gibbon. At last, Ape 2047 may approach the window. You perform your handshake. The attendant holds the lease close to the eye holes of its mask. Finally, its voice jar speaks. Clarifications on existing contracts go to the court of mules. You will need a testament of the feather to be heard there. Well, what, do, what would you know? I just got that. It hands the lease back and summons Ape 2048. <laughs> The Court of Mules. Weird, why would we go to a Court of Mules for a contract? That I don't get. What do mules have to do with this at all? Go to the Court of Mules in the House of Days to argue about contract terms. Oh, it's in this place too. Good. Wait. Wait, how do I get there? Oh, I didn't go... Oh, oh, right. Oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff here now. Holy crap. I was just on the porch of the House of Days, I guess. <laughs> okay. So I can just go straight back to the Court of Apes? What happens if I go to the porch? You've previously entered the House of Days and are recognized by the Lagoy. I mean, this is just the same as going directly to the Court of Apes, right? Like if I... No, oh, wrong one. This? Yeah, same thing. They take you to the same place. Uh, well, let's go to the... Eh. Let's do other stuff before the Court of Mules. The Antechamber of the Pansacritus. One may see the Pansacritus at any time. 
he appears as a sigil of flame at the heart of the House of Days. The same sigil is reflected in the polished stone. It's written at the head of the page, every page in every appointment book of the house. It's spoken as greeting and parting by the servants of the house. To be noticed by the Pansecretus, however, requires effort and prior arrangement. Claim my right? If I had two testaments of the feather, I could do that. <laughs> what? I also have to still have my liver. Am I going to lose my liver if I do this? What the fuck? Oh my god, your liver will be required as a deposit. You will get it back later. Fuck that. Listen to rumors about the Pansecretus. Every time you hear the name, it conveys new meanings to you. The Pansecretus is a logos, a word that was spoken by the westernmost king and has echoed ever since. Depending on your translator, the Pansecretus' meaning may be rendered as any of these phrases. Eternal dominion, everything in its place, no drop-in meetings permitted. <laughs> the sigil is painted in nectar on the ceiling of the Court of Hummingbirds for the better understanding of the winged spirits. In the Court of Whales, it's expressed, expressed in bass song. In the Court of Bloodhounds, it's translated, almost accurately, as a scent of vetiver and sandalwood. So it's a word that was spoken by the westernmost king and has echoed ever since. Fascinating. I can have my litigator argue for my right to enter. Mm -hmm. Gain access to it at a reduced cost and with your liver. That would be nice. Yeah. Oh, failing here will strip you of your status in the Blue Kingdom. That would be bad. Yeah, help me out, litigator. Others have vouched for you. The cowed loquacitor takes your testament of the feather and copies out the text three times on fresh papyrus. To this, it adds a lengthy documentary account of your travels in the Blue Kingdom so far. Then it prepares a table of contents for your documents, enumerating where the reader may find the original testament and where they may look for each of the copies. When it is finished, the stack of paperwork and clay is inches thick and tombstone heavy. This is enough. Good. So when it talks about coming to the presence of the Pansecretus, we mean the presence of the word? Like we enter a chamber where it's echoing, so we can hear it ourselves? The Pansecretus is a wall of flame and wind and noise. So strong is the light that your body is transparent. Even the shadows of your bones is only a faint pattern on the ashen floor. The Pansacritus perceives you. Each hair on your head is counted, every scar. It does not have time for delays. What do you wish? What would you convert from should to is? Make a study of the Pansacritus. Seek to understand it. You can only do one thing here before being cast out. Be sure of your choice. I've only got a 45% chance at even doing that. Oof. Staring into something blinding, you stand at the outskirts of the court in an attitude of supplication, with your knees slightly bent and your palms outward. As long as you hold this appearance of worship, no one troubles you. You may watch others come and go. But the longer you wait, the less you understand. Is the Pansecretus making rulings, or does it merely affirm those that have gone before? Is it a person of sorts, or something rather less, or more? It dispenses with the population of an entire city and does not grant their petition to be remembered after plague has taken them all. Damn. Doesn't grant their petition to be remembered. Can 
can I do that again? I guess I would need another testament of the feather, right? Yeah, I want to succeed at that. Let's get another um, testament of the feather. Heck, let's just get two while I'm here. Now that you've been once, it is easier to claim a second visit. Oh, you unlocked this with one decimal of the feather. This would have taken two before, right? So now it, it's cheaper? Yeah, I still don't want to give my liver, though. Come on, litigator. Help me out. Make a study of it. Oh, man. Come on, litigator. <laughs> Make a study of it. Fuck. God, I'm gonna run out of cryptic benefactors. I only have two more, right? Yeah. I guess I'll do them all. I'm not gonna hoard my stuff. I have them to be used. Come on, please. It's a 45% chance. I'm so unlucky. Last one. Fuck me. Was that like four or five fails in a row? A 45% chance with each one? Well, I will never know anything about the Pansecretus. I don't, I don't know any reliable way to get cryptic benefactors except dropping off the signalman in London and they can try to get one for you, but it takes like a 30 days for them to maybe get you one. It's not, it's not exactly like you can just buy a bunch or something. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the Court of Mules now. Smaller and more dimly lit than the other courts, this place is for applicants who wish to appeal or clarify a previous decision. The spirit of a pear sapling is next in line, followed by a liger in a striped mask and a pair of women holding hands. Oh, and I can't do this without a testament of the feather. <laughs> All right, then. Well, we can study the signs outside the court. You can listen for rumors about the cases being heard within. The Court of Mules attends to spirits that inherit more than one category, to exceptionally stubborn and determined spirits, and to appeals on rulings that have already been given. The queue moves slowly. All right. Check out the Court of Oaks. A vaulted ceiling is distant as a cloud forest canopy. The spirits, too, are mostly vegetative, an unyielding bronze wood, a Welsh yew, some species with scales for bark. The officials and attendants of the court are masked, yoked shades in muddy overalls. Even this court honors the Pansecretus, highest official of the House of Days. Its name is worked into the soil, expressed in the exact proportions of sand and clay and loam. Hmm, if I was yoked, I could claim the status of ephemera here. Observe the Court of Oaks. One may watch with or without entering the court itself. The Court of Oaks serves creatures with very long lives, those with a great deal of patience, and those bringing suit because a contract or term of service overran its natural bounds. Souls with a flickering flaw can be remedied, though at significant cost. 
Those with a yoked status can be returned to ephemera status on recognition that they've been too long in service. Let's check out the Court of Mayflies. This court is little bigger than a dressing room. The spirits that come here pass through quickly, and many of them belong to small creatures. But they are brightly dressed and fast-moving, giving the impression of a midge's wedding. Oh, I can just claim the status of ephemera here. Because I have a litigator with me. Perhaps you were anti-deceased when you arrived here, but life is so short. Produce a witness to your death and be recognized as ephemera. I don't want to do anything as extreme as that just yet. Let's lurk near the court. You may learn what rituals are offered here. The Court of Mayflies serves those who have had exceptionally brief lives, either by nature or by circumstance. It also hears appeals concerning matters where something has been cut off too soon, or where short measure has been granted. Souls with a clear flaw can be remedied, though at significant cost. Only those with a status other than invisible may enter here. The market of litigators and the toll tower can offer instruction in changing status in the Blue Kingdom. Okay. Well, that's all we can do here for now. If I can do something to get a cryptic benefactor, I'm gonna do it. I don't know exactly what the situation that presented itself would be to do that, but I need them <laughs> really badly. I guess just spend time around rich assholes. Like, I don't know, I'd probably get one if I did that race from... Uh, from the Rochester Club. I feel like I'd probably get something like that. Alright, let's just keep going up to the Stone Face Court. I hear gunfire over this way. Lagoy patrol here. It is said they guard vaults of hidden souls. Oh, maybe they're fighting Lagoy. Oh, something saw me. That just looks like a marauder. Grave robber. Oof, that moves fast. This weapon. Resurrectionist deceased. The resurrectionists haunt memoriam, plundering its graves for corpse goods and cadavers. They sell the valuables to pawn shops and the bodies to disgraced scholars, deranged artists, and grisly collectors. Mm, repair my hull or search for valuables. My hole's not bad. It's pretty good. Let's search for valuables. Roll of Thirsty Bombazine. That's nice. And what is this? Like all these... I think those are like roses or something. Like red petals. And... and uh, these aren't marks of correspondence. Whoa! Okay, that must be Lagoy. Okay. Are you attacking me? I don't think it is. It's not... Aggro. I don't know why I came like right for my fucking face. Wow, look at that. It touched me and it didn't hurt. Can I just like bump you? Doesn't seem to mind me pushing it around too much. Wow. This thing is extraordinary. Core. 
I don't just like go up the steps, but you know, I'm in a ship. <laughs> the place looks really cool. Looks like I should be able to dock there. Like it looks really significant, but I can't. That logo sort of sounded like a swarm of bees. I thought I heard something else. What are you? Are you gonna... You no, know, you're not pissed off at me. Logos of the Visitation. I think whether they attack me or not is totally dependent on my status. So thick beset. The conductor has a suggestion. Why don't we leave your aunt? The rest is lost under the barrage of her handbag. Aw, <laughs> poor conductor. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, and my inflamed, sick throat badly needs rest. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we are going to give a bunch of jewels to the judge in the court, and uh, progress the quest of the industrialist.